you all. I hope you're well. Uh, I had a very um, unexpected and overwhelming week last week. Um, I'm going to be moving in a few weeks, but I didn't know that I was going to be moving in a few weeks uh, last week, but now I do. So I had a lot to do, a lot to figure out, a lot to plan. That's why there's boxes back there or junk or whatever you want to call that. And I still have a lot to do, but I'm excited. I will be leaving the LA area or at least the congestion of LA for a little bit and I'm really excited. Uh, I'll be coming back and I'll still be in California, but I am excited to get away for several different reasons. One of them being this individual, George Gascon. That's who we're going to talk about today. Um, The reason I joke about that is one of the reasons I wanted to get out of the area that I'm in is because we've seen an uptick in crime. Uh, And it's also really expensive to live here and nothing's open and people are fearful. And now we have lots of crime happening. Um, it, it, It seems like it's gotten really bad too. The past few weeks we have just armed robberies that are happening in broad daylight people are just walking on the street the thing with lady gaga's dog that was here in west hollywood the other week um and we've had a lot of instances like that and then i don't know if you heard over the weekend in a beverly hills in broad daylight there was an armed robbery uh, a scuffle uh, gunshots were fired and a woman who is at a nice restaurant just eating lunch I believe her with her boyfriend or husband uh, was grazed by a bullet thankfully she's okay but you know she had to go to the hospital and it was really scary for a lot of people and again this was a very populated area in Beverly Hills in broad daylight around you know lunch brunch late afternoon time so it's pretty crazy and like I said we're seeing this Uh, a lot more recently in these areas Um, and it's interesting I was talking to a friend of mine last night about this and about just kind of leaving for a little bit Um, going like crazy far or anything but I I was talking about the crime and what he was saying well he was like yeah but you know this is happening everywhere and a lot of it is because of these lockdowns and um, people are just financially insecure right now um, insecure about food and jobs and money and being evicted and all of those things so they're getting a lot more desperate and I do believe that has a lot to do with it Uh, but also in LA and California we have a lot of other things going on too that are making it just a perfect storm to be a hotbed of crime and you know that's Newsom letting people out of um, prison and jail at the beginning of everything Um, you have our our budget cuts for our LA police department 150 million dollars and now we have a DA who doesn't prosecute uh actually runs his um district attorney's office like a public defender's office um and that's what George Gascon is doing and that's what we're going to talk about today so the way I'm going to do this we'll talk about who George Gascon is I'll show you who supports him because that's an important thing to understand even still he has a lot of supporters and a lot of elected officials are openly supporting him so we'll talk about who his supporters are what they believe, what he believes, what's happening right now in Los Angeles, how his recall effort is going. There is an effort to recall George Gascon. So we'll talk about what's going on with that right now. And then I have some numbers that I'm going to throw at you and just completely debunk everything that he's saying and doing. And it'll be really easy because all you have to do is look at the numbers to understand that what he is pushing is not this this criminal justice reform as what he says it is and I also have to start by saying I am all for criminal justice reform and most of the people that voted for him the reason they voted for him is because they are all for criminal justice reform as well um that doesn't mean that you have to um not listen to victims that doesn't mean that you have to let violent criminals back on in the street and that's what he ran on he ran on a platform of criminal justice reform um of racial equality he ran on this platform that's what a lot of people voted for him but he uh always maintained that he wouldn't be letting violent criminals back out that he this doesn't apply to violent crime it only um applies to sort of low level crime and things of that nature Well, people learned very quickly once he was sworn into office that that, in fact, was not true. So we'll get into that in a second. 
And that's why a lot of people that even voted for him, they just feel duped. They feel like they were lied to. Uh, So we'll get into all of that. But first of all, this is significant, I think, for people that don't live in California or don't live in LA for a few different reasons. And one of those is because California is the future of progressive America. And a lot of these policies that have already passed in California and aren't working, by the way, are policies that are being proposed in Washington, D.C. literally as we speak. I've even heard senators, congressmen, congresswomen uh, talk about that. Uh, Talk about these policies that are not clearly not working in California um, are being talked about in Washington and probably in states all over the U.S. So it is important to pay attention what's going on here because this is you know, if we keep going down this super progressive path, this is going to be the future of America. And I actually just read the other day, uh, this is kind of off topic a little bit, but not really. Um, I read the other day that 40% of people that live in the state of California are under or right around the poverty line. Uh, Also, I think in order to live a, a decent, like comfortable life, in California, you have to make somewhere around $100,000 a year as one person. That's a lot as one person. Uh, we also have the highest taxes, the highest gas taxes. So this this state is not friendly to the regular middle class law-abiding citizens. And, um, and that will be the future of America unless people kind of start to wake up and, and start voting against this stuff. So I think that's why it's significant and also I just learned this, Uh, George Gascon. So George Gascon was a previous chief of police. I believe he actually doesn't even have any um, experience prosecuting. I don't think he does. I don't think he's ever actually been a prosecutor in court. Uh, Fact check me on that, but that's not the point of this. Uh, The point of it is he used to be the chief of police. He was chief of police in Arizona, and then he was chief of police in San Francisco. He was appointed by then Mayor uh, Gavin Newsom. Uh, He was also appointed later on to be the district attorney in San Francisco, appointed again by Gavin Newsom to fill Kamala Harris's spot when she uh, was going to go off and be the attorney general of California. So fun fact, it's all connected. And the funny thing is both Newsom and Gascon now have recall efforts, which is pretty ironic Gascon, by the way, just quick update, I believe, sorry about that, I believe Gascon is right around 2 million signatures right now. So that's kind of the a little bit of background on Gascon. Also, under Gascon's ruling in San Francisco, so he loves to say that homicides went down under his ruling in San Francisco. Uh, okay, but also violent crime increased under, overall violent crime increased under him in San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco became the number one hotbed for uh, property crime. They had the highest property crime rates out of anywhere else in California, but also had fewer arrests than anyone else in California, which is interesting. But the more you learn about Gascon, the more it kind of makes sense. Uh, Also, um, he never finished his term in San Francisco. He left early to come down and establish residency here in Los Angeles so that he could run in Los Angeles. So he didn't even finish that term. And a lot of people didn't like him. A lot of people that worked under him quit um, his his mayor and chief of police would not endorse him in Los Angeles. They endorsed Jackie Lacey, uh, a woman that actually worked for Gascon, wrote sort of an op-ed that warned Los Angeles against Gascon. So a lot of people were not fans of his in San Francisco, but even still, he has a lot of support here in Los Angeles. George Soros pumped two point. million dollars into his campaign. John Legend was a huge supporter and I believe financially supported him. I just don't know the exact amount. Um, But I'll show you some of the people that support him. So this is John Legend. Uh, December 7th when Gascon was sworn in, John Legend says, George Gascon, our new DA in Los Angeles, just announced some major reforms on his first day. Proud to have supported his election. This is what this is the kind of change we voted for and the kind of change we need to bring our system closer to true justice. That's what John Legend said. Uh, This is Lindsay Horvath. She's actually my mayor. She's the mayor of West Hollywood. And she said, 
I'm so impressed by George Gascon's commitment to leading with compassion and an eye for eradicating uh, systemic R's and prejudice. I am eager to work with him on a new vision for hashtag justice. Congrats on your swearing in today. Hashtag WeHo. WeHo is West Hollywood. That's what that's what the kids call West Hollywood. They call it WeHo. Uh, so that's Lindsay, and then you have this city city council member in Los Angeles. Uh, I stand or support BLM LA. I stand with George Gascon. Um, so that's what people think. And then this recently was released by Gascon in his office, and he says, and I'm just giving you their their sort of side of things so you can understand. So this was a statement that was released by George Gascon's office. And this came because obviously he's getting a lot of criticism. Uh, his first day that he was in office, uh, minutes after being sworn in, before even um, introducing himself to his new staff, he emailed out a sweeping list of directives getting rid of special enhancements, which could be like gang, hate crime, um, deadly weapon, multiple victims, stuff like that. So these are enhancements that go on top of um, that go on top of of uh, sentencing. And this was actually voted in by the people of California. The people of California voted for special enhancements. Um, he wanted to get rid of three strikes, which again, the people of California voted that in a while back. Uh, he wants to get rid of cash bail which again, the people of California voted to keep cash bail. They did not want to get rid of cash bail. Um, but those are a bunch of things that he um, is decriminalizing, like a lot of lower level crime, which is what happened in San Francisco, which is why you saw an uptick in certain crime in San Francisco. Uh, so that's what he did. A lot of people were really upset about it. And then afterwards, a lot of victims were feeling like they weren't being heard. They were feeling abandoned by their prosecutors. Um, they weren't, uh, he was telling his prosecutors not to show up for sentencing hearings and stuff of this nature. So the victims were going and just feeling completely abandoned. Um, victims aren't feeling like they're getting justice at all in sentencing. They don't feel like they're being heard. And again, they feel like Gascon is running his um, DA's office like a public defender's office and not a district attorney's office. And that's the interesting thing because the district attorney's office is there to fight for and be the voice for the victims. The public defender's office is there to defend the criminals. So that's a lot of criticism that he's getting. And, and to make that even worse, one of the um, people that he hired, um, I've confirmed DA George Gascon, this is Bill from Fox LA, uh, has hired public defender Tiffany Blacknell to his administration as a grade four prosecutor. Blacknell served on Gascon's policy committee during his campaign. She is called LAPD Barbarians and says prisons should be abolished. So over the summer, she tweeted this out. Look at these barbarians. Hashtag LAPD is an occupying army. Um, hashtag defund the police. So that's basically what she was saying during the summer. And she is now a grade four prosecutor. And again, she doesn't have any experience prosecuting, which is a requirement to be a prosecutor in Los Angeles for the DA's office. But uh, I guess she skipped that line. Uh, and again, she is all for abolishing prisons. So a lot of people just think this has gone really radical, really off the deep end. And that is his criticism. Um, but again, this is something that his office said. So let's let's read this to kind of understand where he's coming from, I guess. This poll, so he's referring to a poll and he likes to refer to science numbers and polls as to why he's doing what he's doing. Um, but he never really tells you exactly what they are. And if you go and you click on the poll and you actually look at it, it's from a nonprofit. It's very misleading. And I, I just, it are polls that, I wouldn't really trust. Um, so there's that. And, and again, it's one-sided because he's talking about a, a certain group of victims, but he's not talking about all victims. Um, so he says, this poll of LA survivors confirms what similar national surveys have shown. The vast majority of victims are seeking healing, restoration, and rehabilitation rather than retribution. It is exploitative and disingenuous for proponents of the policies of mass incarceration to justify the expense, troubling racial disparities, and non-existent safety 
safety benefit in the name of a survivor community that overwhelmingly does not agree with them. Uh, what is most illuminating from this poll is how much we must do to advance the needs of victims in response to the troubling findings of this survey, namely how uh, few received help in spite of how many wish they had access to support. You mean like you, like your office, who's not supporting victims and not listening to victims? Um, I'm not going to continue reading that because you get the point. Again, it was it was a very strange and and biased uh, study when I looked at it. And again, he's talking about victims, but he's not talking about any of these victims. These are a lot of the victims who under Gascon's policies have been negatively affected and their stories are absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you a few news clips so you can kind of get a better idea of what is going on in LA and how some people are reacting to Gascon. My shoulder is broken. My humerus bone is broken. I have lacerations to my chin and I have bruises all over my legs and my dress was torn. It's just falling apart because uh, people are doing this out of desperation. I just think that because of this new DA, um, they are just, you know, this is what I can do. I can go get as many Rolexes as I want. This is the end thing now. When it come time for me to go to the parole hearing, they only gave me one week's notice. I had no representation and I ended up having to ask for my son's file so that I could represent my son as a, as if it, I was a prosecutor instead of being given my income, uh, my um, impact statement. I was literally trying to do the legal part He's beaten, left for dead, he fought for his life, and the DA did what? Absolutely nothing. Um, in fact, he's made matters worse for me. It's are dangerous, not only the LA's, but for this state and this nation. Are the criminals aware of these changes? Oh, they're, they're fully aware. They actually love the DA. And, and can you imagine that? Is it typical that a deputy DA takes on his DA? No, it, it's not typical. Could you look in the eyes of the victims in L.A. County and tell them they're safe? I can't now. So you can kind of see what's going on here in L.A. And, and what people are thinking about this and some of the national attention that it's getting. And I also want to read you something really quick. This is really interesting. This is an individual that works in a jail. And I just want to read you sort of her observation of what's going on. I, I found this interesting. Um, it says, you guys, I work in a jail and it's literally a revolving door for criminals. Gascon has made it worse in LA County, but all of California is rampant with crime as well. It started with Governor Brown and now it's Newsom. Only violent criminals are kept in custody now. Homelessness is at a fever pitch here and they're all addicted to meth. They are burglarizing houses and businesses, stealing cars and everything else they can get their hands on. And there are no consequences. If we try to keep someone in custody, our court just lets them go. We have the same repeat offenders come through and nothing ever happens to them. On top of it all, we, the people of California, are constantly being lied to. Our officials talk about how well rehabilitation is definitely working because you can see that less people are incarcerated. That is a complete lie. Less people are incarcerated because they keep rewriting laws and ordering us to cite and release so they go back on the streets. And then, of course, of course, Gascon makes sure no one is being sentenced once they get hurt. Now, obviously, I can't confirm that this is 1,000% true. This is somebody's opinion on what they're seeing happening. But I will say um, I don't work in a jail. But what I see happening on the streets is, is pretty much in line with what this person is observing as well. So there's that. Now let's look at where the recall is at right now. A lot of uh, district attorneys in other jurisdictions have expressed concern over what Gascon is doing and they recently had a bit of a win. So I'm just going to read you a little bit. Um, this is a news release from uh, County of Fresno District Attorney Lisa Smitkamp. Smitkamp. I've never seen that last name before. Uh, so let's see. So she says, today Judge uh, Chalfont, Chalfont, all these names, stood up to George Gascon and his illegal directives that seek to threaten the safety of the people of Los Angeles County and residents of California. Gascon is not a criminal justice reformer. He is an anarchist. He is a rogue 
he is a rogue and it is and is disguising himself, sorry, this is small lettering, uh, as a district attorney, isn't even in office to promote public safety, to assist victims of crime, and to help keep children out of gangs. He is there to push an agenda that protects violent gang members, career criminals, and those who have a reckless disregard for human life. Today, I salute the Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge uh, Chow Font for ordering George Gascon to abide by the law. So they were saying a lot of his directives actually went against the law, so this this judge basically ordered that he has to follow the law. He cannot go against the law. So if any of his directives are going against that, he is not allowed to do that, which was actually a huge win. And as far as the recall effort, that is finally being pushed underway. And as far as the recall effort where it is right now, so in order to recall someone who is elected into office, they have to be in office 90 days and before you can kick it off. And to kick it off, you have to gather 20 signatures of people that want to push the recall forward. And then you basically send a letter to Gascon and it kicks off everything. That's when you start to get your signatures. He needs 580,000 signatures to have a special election to possibly get him recalled. But he was this week served, they got their 20 signatures, they had a victim's vigil where everyone came out, they spoke, they got the signatures, and then they served him with this. And it says, I'll just read you a little bit from it, it says the grounds for the recall as stated on the official notice included the following. Since being elected, Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon has abandoned crime victims and their families. Gascon has disregarded the rule of law and weakened lawful sentencing requirements for the most violent criminals, including murders, armed uh, robbers, and other very bad people. Uh, George Gascon's new policies treat career and repeat um, violent offenders as if they have never committed a crime, ignoring public safety laws approved by the people. Gascon has even reduced sentences in um, hate crimes, gun crimes, and gang crimes. On behalf of crime victims and their families and in the interest of public safety, the notice of intention to recall George Gascon as Los Angeles District Attorney is submitted. So that's where the recall effort is with him now. And let's prove that this is not criminal justice reform. Okay, so the reasoning behind a lot of these policies, and this is from George Gascon's mouth himself, is that um, black men especially and Hispanic men are overrepresented in prison. Um, they are incarcerated at a disproportionate rate, which when you look at the numbers is completely true. And again, I am not against criminal justice reform. I think those are things we should always be talking about always be looking, always where are we wrong, where are we right, how can we improve, and I am all for things like low-level, you know, drug crimes and things like that, not putting people away because of those things. So I'm for criminal justice reform. That's not what this is, and I think a few people kind of pointed that out before. It's not what this is, and when you look at a disproportionate number of people in a certain area, you have to think about this number. In LA County, 90 percent of homicide victims are black and hispanic men 90 percent of homicide victims are black and hispanic men 72 percent of violent crime victims are minority people from minority communities uh so again when you look at those numbers and when you just look yourself at the people who this is negatively affecting the people that are really upset the 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 family members of uh, these victims or survivors or whatever you want to call them, they are mostly from minority communities. So again, you have to ask, who is who is this benefiting? If if most of the victims are minority communities, if most of your homicide victims are Black and Hispanic men, again, who is this helping? How that it doesn't add up. Also, several years back in Harvard Park, that's one of LA's most dangerous and violent neighborhoods, uh, the police actually did a community policing program uh, where I just thought this was pretty interesting. This is the LA Times, and this was a few years ago, way before Gascon and any of that. And it says, in Harvard Park, one of South Los Angeles's most dangerous and violent neighborhoods, the LAPD launched an intensive community policing program in September. 
Officials credit the program called Community Safety Partnership with reducing homicides in the city's public housing developments. Um, so I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about everything. I've really been wanting to talk about Gascon for a long time. I could probably show you just hours of information that I've collected on him. I'll be paying close attention to everything that's happening with this. Um, and let me know what you think. All right, thank you for watching. Bye.